I couldn't believe it when my girlfriend, Emma, asked me to join her girls only party. No boys allowed, she emphasized. I hesitated, but her pleading eyes convinced me to go along with her plan. With reluctance, I agreed to attend, under the condition that I had to disguise myself as a girl. Emma was overjoyed, and she helped me pick out an outfit that would hopefully make me blend in. I felt a mix of nerves and excitement as I transformed into Alexa for the night. Upon arriving at the party, I realized how challenging it was to maintain my disguise. The girls chatted about things I knew nothing about, and I fumbled through conversations, hoping no one would see through my act. I was constantly on edge, wondering if my secret would be revealed. As the night progressed, the atmosphere became livelier, and I found myself caught up in the energy of the party. I even started to forget about the disguise until someone accidentally bumped into me, causing my wig to shift. The room fell silent as all eyes turned to me. Panicking, I tried to adjust my wig, but it was too late. Emma's friends exchanged puzzled glances, and realization dawned on their faces. My cover was blown. Emma approached with a mix of surprise and amusement. Alex? What are you doing here? She asked, barely containing her laughter. Caught in the act, I confessed. Laughter erupted throughout the room as the girls teased me for my bold attempt to infiltrate their girls' only gathering. Emma, still amused, decided to play along, encouraging the girls to give me a makeover. Reluctantly, I submitted to their playful feminization efforts, enduring the application of makeup and the styling of my hair. As they transformed me, the laughter evolved into a shared experience, breaking down the gender barriers that had initially kept me out. The teasing laughter subsided, and the girls exchanged mischievous glances. Emma, with a playful grin, suggested taking the transformation a step further. At first, I hesitated, but the newfound camaraderie and the desire not to spoil the fun for everyone led me to reluctantly agree. The girls gathered an impromptu beauty kit, and the process began. My body hair was shaved off, and my eyebrows were meticulously plucked into delicate arches. They insisted on painting my nails in vibrant colors, turning my hands into a canvas of femininity. As if that wasn't enough, Emma proposed another playful idea, hormones. Amidst laughter and camaraderie, they presented me with a mock potion, promising it would enhance my feminine charm. While I knew it was just a humorous gesture, I found myself sipping the concoction, playing along with the light-hearted spirit of the evening. As the days passed, I became a regular at the girls' gatherings. The initial embarrassment transformed into a shared joke, and the process of Alexa's daily feminization became a ritual. The girls continued to experiment with my appearance, trying out different hairstyles, outfits, and makeup looks. Surprisingly, I discovered a sense of liberation in the process. Stripped of societal norms and expectations, I embraced the opportunity to explore a different side of myself. The girls' acceptance and support fostered an environment where I felt comfortable expressing aspects of my identity that I had never considered. While the feminization started as a playful act, it evolved into a journey of self-discovery. I found myself questioning traditional notions of masculinity and femininity, realizing that identity is a spectrum rather than a rigid binary. The mock hormones, initially just a playful addition to the transformation, started to have subtle effects. I noticed changes in my body and emotions, and it became a topic of fascination for the girls. They eagerly monitored and discussed the ongoing feminization project, as they fondly called it. My interactions with the girls deepened, and I began to share not just the physical changes but also the emotional journey I was experiencing. They provided unwavering support, becoming confidants in this unexpected exploration of identity. Our daily gatherings turned into a safe space where I could express myself freely. As the weeks passed, the feminization extended beyond the surface. The girls introduced me to the intricacies of makeup, helping me find a style that felt authentic. Emma, in particular, became a mentor, guiding me through the art of femininity with patience and understanding. The conversation shifted from the initial light-hearted teasing to more profound discussions about gender, identity, and societal expectations. The girls, once amused by the novelty of the situation, became advocates for breaking free from restrictive norms. The hormones, though mock, became a metaphorical catalyst for self-discovery. 
I explored facets of my identity that had been dormant, shedding preconceived notions of masculinity. The process wasn't about becoming someone else but rather embracing a more authentic version of myself. Surprisingly, the transformation garnered the attention of others outside our close-knit group. While some were initially skeptical, they soon recognized the sincerity and depth behind the seemingly whimsical endeavor. The feminization project sparked conversations about gender fluidity and the freedom to express oneself without societal constraints. Embracing my newfound identity, I decided to attend the next, No Boys Allowed, party as my authentic self. The girls rallied behind me, offering encouragement and support. As I walked into the gathering, I felt a mix of excitement and nervous anticipation. To my surprise, the atmosphere was welcoming. The girls, who had once seen me as an unexpected addition, now greeted me as one of their own. The conversations flowed naturally, and I found a genuine sense of belonging that transcended traditional gender norms. As the night unfolded, I discovered that I wasn't the only one who had undergone a similar journey. In the midst of laughter and shared stories, I learned that there were others who had challenged societal expectations and redefined their identities. Each girl had her unique story, contributing to a mosaic of experiences that celebrated diversity and authenticity. The realization that I was not alone in this transformative journey created a powerful bond among us. We shared advice, exchanged anecdotes, and reveled in the beauty of self-discovery. The once rigid distinction between boys and girls at the party became a fluid spectrum where everyone was free to express their individuality. As the night progressed, I marveled at the acceptance and understanding that permeated the space. The girls, once bound by the rule of exclusion, had evolved into a community that embraced diversity and celebrated the richness of each person's journey. Attending the party as one of the real girls marked a significant milestone in my personal growth. The experience transcended the initial playfulness of disguise and feminization, evolving into a testament to the power of breaking free from societal constraints and embracing authenticity. The No Boys Allowed party, once a symbol of exclusivity, transformed into a symbol of inclusivity and acceptance. Our shared stories became a beacon for others navigating the complexities of identity, inspiring a more open-minded and understanding community. As the night came to an end, I left the party not just as Alexa but as an individual who had embraced the journey of self-discovery and found acceptance among a group of extraordinary friends. The girls' laughter echoed in my memory, a reminder that breaking the rules sometimes leads to the most beautiful and unexpected connections.